Now let's look at attention schema theory. And the first thing you might ask is, what's an attention schema? So I'll start with some definitions. A body schema is a model of the body. So there's the physical body, but then there's the mental mo model of the body that the, that the brain has. And this mental model of the body has information about the angles of all the limbs and the, the position of the body in the world, things like that. Similarly, the attention schema is a model of our current state of attention. Now there's an underlying neurological mechanism that pays attention, whatever it is, neurons firing. The attention schema is not that mechanism. The attention schema is a model of what that mechanism is doing. And there's a lot of potential targets for attention. For example, all five of the senses can be fences, all five of the senses can be a target for the attention. And feelings and emotions can be a target, or the inner voice of the thinker can be a target. And you know, you can imagine things happening, those are all targets of attention. So the attention schema will, will be a model of where attention is being paid by, by the human. Now let's look at the effect of attention on world models. So the idea is there's a real world out there that doesn't have colors in it, but then there's the world model you see here that has colors in it. Okay, so if you keep your eye on that center house there and use your peripheral attention to shift around, does the world change? No. Does the world model change? I don't think so. Let's try it. So keep your, your center of vision on that center house and then direct attention to that house on the right, direct attention to that house on the left, and back to the center only. Did the world model change? No, it always, it always looks like the world itself is out there. What changes is that when you paid attention to something, you can see more information about that object. You can see more details. When you're paying attention to the house on the right there, you could see more details about the, the windows and the doors and the colors, and the same for the house on the left. So there is a, what I'm calling the current representation of the world, which contains that extra information. So there's the model of the world, which, which doesn't change, but the current representation of the world has extra information in it when you pay attention. So if this is the current representation of the world, you see the house in the center there has, has got, is clearer and has more uh, information available. And when you shift per peripheral attention to the right, that's clearer. Per shift it to the left, that's clearer, and back to the center. Now notice that the current representation of the world, the CRW, changes when attention is being directed around. Now the experiencer is, is modifying that internal model of the world by directing attention. So this is where the experiencer has a self-model. It has a self-model in this internal model of the world, the current representation of the world. And it's the attention schema, which is the model of the experiencer. So let's look at the three objects we've been talking about here. We've got the world model, we've got the attention schema, and we've got the current representation of the world. I claim that if you have any two of these, you can compute what the third one should look like. For example, if you have these, you know where to put the spotlight of attention to get the current representation of the world. If you have these two, you can subtract them and see where the attention schema must be pointing. And finally, if you have these two, you can, you can create a function which will give you the world model as a function of the attention schema combined with the current representation of the world. So my claim here is that the, the information content of the world model is equal to the information content of the attention schema combined with the current representation of the world. Now let's add this information to the agent self-models because we've now established that the experiencer self-model is in fact the attention schema. That's the model of how the experiencer changes that internal model of the world by directing attention around, and the model of that attention is exactly the attention schema. Now I'm gonna to turn to attention schema theory and attention schema theory was proposed by a Princeton neuroscientist named, named Michael Graziano to explain awareness. It's a model of awareness, what it means to be aware of something, the, the, to have that conscious experience of something. And everything I'm gonna present on this slide and on the next slide is from the paper by Graziano and Webb that's referenced at the bottom of the screen here. And in fact, everything here is from figure, a, figure 1A and figure 1B on that paper. And that, Figure 1A and B has a very long caption under, underneath it. I've summarized that caption in the text on these two slides. So all the text here is really from Graziano. The only thing I've done is modify his notation to use my notation. So first of all, when visual attention is captured by an apple, that changes the current representation of the world. There's now more information available about that apple in that current representation of the world in the brain there. That is not awareness. That is only information. All that is is new, new information coming to the brain. To get actual awareness, you need two additional models. You need the self-model of the human, and you need the attention schema. 
And the idea here is that the attention schema is what links the self-model of the human to the object that you're aware of. So self-model, attention schema pointing to the object that you're aware of. In an equation, it would be that the overall model, overall model of awareness is self-model plus attention schema plus CRW. Now, attention schema th theory implies that only the experiencer is conscious. If you imagine you put the thinker and the doer and the experiencer into three separate brains instead of all being in one brain, it's only the brain that has the experiencer in it that has the attention schema and has the representation of the world. The thinker and doer don't have that. So it's only the experiencer that's conscious. Now, I'm going to talk about thinker consciousness and doer consciousness later. Whenever I'm talking about that, it's the thinker combined with the experiencer that gives you thinker consciousness, and it's the doer combined with the experiencer that gives you doer consciousness. But the only agent that's conscious all by itself is the experiencer.